Hi, welcome to this Heist tutorial. In this video, we're going to explore some more parts of the interface designer. Okay, so in our last video, we created these four buttons and played around with the alignment controls. We also looked at how to zoom in the canvas and how to deselect selected controls and how to select multiple controls by dragging a box. Let's start by looking at other ways to select controls. So you can click to select a control. If you hold control or command on your keyboard, you can click other controls to add them to the selection or to deselect them. You can also select controls over here in the widget list. So I can click button one. I can hold control to select or deselect individual controls. Or I can hold shift to select multiple controls in a row. and use control to deselect them individually. When you have multiple controls selected, you can move them around on the canvas using the mouse. You can also position them using the X and Y sliders over here in the property editor. Currently these controls are positioned at different parts on the Y axis, so we can't edit them in the property editor using the slider. You'll notice it has a star in the box for the Y. That's because one box can't display all the different values for these controls. But if we click them individually, we can see that there's a value in the Y box. Let's move these controls. And then we're going to align them on the Y axis. Previously, we did that by clicking this button up here to align the controls. But now we're going to do it by editing this Y property. So I'm going to type 50 here, and now they're all going to be moved to position 50 pixels from the top of the canvas. And let's space them evenly again. Let's look at some more properties, starting with the ID. So each of these buttons is called button 1, 2, 3, 4. If I duplicate one of these buttons by pressing Ctrl D, we get another button called button five. If you make multiple controls with the same name, highs will add a number to the end and increment it. This is because each control must have a unique ID. You can change the ID up here in the property editor. We can remove that and call it my button. So every control must have a unique ID and this is important if you're accessing controls through scripting or linking controls to various parameters in your instrument. There are lots of standard properties that all the different controls have. For example, if I add a slider, this also has the ID, it has text, enable, visible, tooltip, and as you can see, these are the same for the button. So most of the controls have some common properties. Let's delete this for now. So other properties we can look at. Enabled, there are times when you may want to disable a control. We can make a control visible or invisible. This is useful for doing tabbed interfaces, amongst other things. We can add a tooltip for the control. So we'll make sure that control is enabled. Let's type a tooltip. I'll type my tooltip. Now I've got to lock the canvas again. I'll click this pencil button and we get the lock icon reappearing here to show the canvas is locked. And if I hover my mouse over the button, we can look over here at the top right of the screen and we'll see the tooltip, my tooltip. So you can have different tooltips for each control. And now we'll just look at a few more important properties. So we've got save in preset. When you create user presets or your user creates a preset for your instrument, you can have certain controls save their value within the preset and if you don't want a control to save its value, you can set that to disabled. We've got the X and Y position, which we looked at earlier. You can also change the width and height of your controls. This becomes very useful later when you're using custom graphics for your controls. You can change the colors. And if you want to load a custom image for a button, let's say, you can load a custom film, film strip image. We'll look at all these controls 
individually in more detail as we go through. Okay guys, that was a quick look through the property editor in the Highs interface designer. In the next video, we'll look at the widget component list and see what we can do with that. Any questions or comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below the video on YouTube and I'll see you next time.